I'm here in Indiana at Terran Robotics where this brand new innovative startup is working out of this garage to build a drone that can automate construction activities on the job site. This video is jam-packed with awesome stuff from the Adobe materials they're using to a mobile home on wheels that was constructed by a co-founder to the future site of a Habitat for Humanity build that Terran is planning now to construct with their drone robotic autonomy system. Their CEO has experience with Intel AI systems and they've even been rapidly prototyping all kinds of solutions for a wide array of things they'll need for construction sites. I'm very impressed with their agile mentality and acknowledgement of how important it is to optimize for speed of innovation. This company is taking a materials first focus on a construction solution. They're actually subscribers to this channel, so they recognize how important it is to have a cost-effective material to build with. Since at the end of the day, after all the technologies left the job site, the material is what's left, what the home is built out of. If you'd like to support my channel, check out the virtual village at the link in the description where you can do virtual tours of many of the automated construction sites I visit. And without further ado, let's meet the Terran team. I'm Nick Ely, mechanical engineer for Terran Robotics. My name is Nate O'Donnell. I'm the chief marketing officer for Terran Robotics. This is our impact hammer, custom designed to pack the Adobe material. This is a gantry that we are going to mount the hammer on for testing. Eventually this will be mounted to our drone, but we can start programming with the AI uh, so we can use the cameras to help position and then correlate that to the drone later on. Sweet. There's a spur gear, there's a timing belt. All of everything has been 3D printed to the housing to encapsulate the motor and all of our electronics, which is kind of a mess. but in the process of getting cleaned up. Hi, my name is Zach DeWheel. I'm co-founder and CEO of Terran Robotics. We're here, we've got some of our, our like uh, compression test samples. Uh, we're experimenting with different mixing methods, different uh, mixes, different ratios, uh, different times for mixing, all, all this kind of thing. These aren't bricks that we're placing. We're not putting uh, bricks on site. We've got uh, a kind of more of a wet cow dung type mixture that actually gets uh, picked in place uh, in the wall. The thing we're testing with these right now is uh, compression. We'll also be measuring modulus elasticity, uh, other, other properties like that. There's, there's uh, straw mixed in and other fibers. Uh, so we actually do have some, some tensile strength. Uh, but yeah, not, not a ton. I think it was like two days old or something like that. Um, but it, it's something like this. It's, it'll be softer than this. Uh, but it's a, a mix of clay, sand, straw. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and this one has actually been rained on for a few days, so yeah. it's uh, uh, closer to yet real thing. Yeah, I mean, it is like definitely weaker than like typically it would be a lot, even a lot, uh, you know, more smooth finish. Uh, there'd be less fibers visible, but there's a lot of fiber in there. You can see where we're getting that tensile strength from. You're using any kind of binder? Uh, the clay is the binder. So the clay, uh, when it's wet, it expands, and when it's dry, it shrinks. We got an NSF grant uh, to, to help fund the research on the, on the drone, uh, and especially like flying with, uh, while it's interacting with, with the environment. Like most drones are just flying around, taking pictures. Where our drone actually picks things up, it hammers, it interacts with the, with the construction site. Uh, and this wall behind me is, uh, is not, not built autonomously, but a built by hand uh, demonstration of the kind of walls we want to be building. Um, yeah, this is, this is built in a couple of days uh, and it's got a, a plaster surface finish. Uh, we can finish this way. We've also got some uh, variations on different, uh, different plaster finishes here. I actually used a grinder to, to grind these smooth and polish them. Um, we tried different paints. Uh, some of these are also like waterproofing uh, mixtures. Uh, so this is probably the fastest, cheapest way. If, we, uh, if, if someone wants a wall that looks like this, kind of like polished, polished concrete wall, um, or if we want to paint, paint on it, uh, this is going to be the cheapest finish. Waterproofing is cheap. It's a, it's a proprietary mixture, um, but it's, it's uh, something like 25 cents a square foot. It's, it's cheap. Is it hydrophobic? Uh, spray on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, we actually don't want to be fully waterproof. Uh, we just want to be uh, water impermeable. Uh, so we want, there, actually the wall itself holds uh, huge amounts of water so that in the summer in the Midwest, for example, it can absorb the humidity uh, and then in the winter it can release it. So it's a natural passive humidifier. Uh, so we don't want to impede that process, uh, but the water on here will beat up and flow off. Yes, yeah, so this, is, this is in a storage area. This is our, our previous version of the drone. It's fallen apart since, since then, but we've got previous power supply system on there. 
uh, different different guard system. I mean, everything on here has been replaced. The power supply has been one of the biggest, which is which is down here. Uh, we, we tried a bunch of different things to get power onto the drone because not a it's not a battery powered drone it's it's tethered uh, and so that gives us a huge amount of uh, thrust to weight ratio that you wouldn't get with with batteries uh, but you have to get that power on the on board somehow. Uh, Danny Weddle, uh, yeah. CEO of Turner Robotics. Uh, so like when we were putting this drone together initially, a lot of the work that I did was in just building these brackets and a whole bunch of different systems for uh, bumping the walls, crashing, keeping the like, major components alive. So that's, that's was my little fight in this particular iteration of the drone. So. Where were the breaking points that you had to fix often? Uh, 3D printing, so we had tons of repeated failure. I'm going to step right inside. See where it's splitting here and here. That kind of constantly happened as we were as using this equipment. That's why there's zip ties everywhere, uh, lots of epoxy. Eventually we got to better printers and the pieces that are in black and everything was thicker, heavier, stronger. From my previous life, uh, Carpenter Al Tiny Homes. Um, I guess most noteworthy out on this side is uh, all of this lumber came from my parents' property, so I was doing a lot of milling in my mid-20s. Uh, a lot of the inside stuff did too as well, but this was this is kind of more significant outside. It's set with this bank of windows to face south, but there's so many windows in this, it's not really a true passive, passive structure. We're doing regional shows up until COVID. It's built to seat between 20 and 25 with like a three to four piece band coming on this back half. Um, we did Lowe's Festival. That's the biggest one I think that you did other people in the world would know. We did a couple other local ones as well, but, but Lonus was, uh, we were kind of like a bootleg thing for a year and then we were invited back the next time. Uh, so the, this, this space right now is listed for 60,000. Um, I'll give you a quick dime tour. Uh, so this kind of here back is, you know, kitchen, bathroom, full soaker tub, composting toilet. Uh, that part turns into a stage area by moving the bed loft. Uh, the first part of it, as you see here, there's a little, you know, bottom rib that ties it all together. Uh, and this is what, I, when I was using this or imagining it for school, which was one of its other functions, I had this two-stage loft. When it was low, I'd use the top as my office. When it was uh, down, I'd use the bottom as my bed nook. Um, right now, it's bed on top. Um, but yeah, everything in here is, most of the wood's cut from either my farm or regionally. Um, all the insulation sheep's wool, all the oil's tongue oil, so just all, a lot of natural materials coming together to make these really small, healthy, rolling spaces. This is uh, the kind of variegated, multi-species ceiling. Uh, I did this a number of times. Very honestly, the first time I did it was I didn't have enough of any particular wood to, to fill out the ceiling, so I just started kind of, you know, experimenting with different patterns I could make, and this kind of quasi-random is what I landed on. And then later on, when I was working with uh, local mills, they'll cut this narrow wood from the extra bits that come from better boards. So it's kind of like a recycled byproduct uh, of the local wood industry. And on these, there's, there's always like, you know, between five, six, seven species of, of wood in each home. Terran and Habitat are having a meeting right now about how they'll build a house here for someone in need using drones to complete the fabrication of the adobe structure. My name is Jacob Bauer Burr. Uh, I guess we came up with the title of founding designer at Terran Robotics. I hold a master's in architecture and a PhD in political science and economics. And we're here on a site uh, on the north west side of Bloomington where we're hopefully going to be building a single family house uh, with Habitat for Humanity. And this is an unusual build obviously because it will hopefully have a mix of hand labor and autonomous drone labor. Uh, but also we're building it out of earth, uh, so cobs specifically. And so the walls are going to be thicker than usual, but it's also going to be a much more comfortable house internally. So we're here uh, on the northwest side of Bloomington looking at a site where we'll be doing a single family structure uh, with Habitat for Humanity. These are two options. Um, we're going to see how either of them fit on the site. Things are going to change, um, but it's going to be a, a different process than a lot of Habitat and a lot of any builds for a couple reasons. Uh, obviously, uh, it's going to be built out of mud, essentially, uh, cobs, so the walls are going to be very thick. Uh, it's also going to have some hand labor and also some drone labor, autonomous drone labor. So that's something we're going to have to figure out. Habitat for Humanity obviously has a, lot, a mission to help teach people how to build houses and maintain homes. Um, and, and we want to encourage that. So we're going to be teaching people how to build earthen homes out of hand, but also show them what it looks like to build a, a home with an autonomous drone. I'm Sarah Wolford, and I'm the construction site supervisor here at Habitat for Humanity in Monroe County. I'm Torn Rash, and I'm also the site supervisor here at Habitat. Uh, Nathan Ferreira, I'm the director of land development and production. 
I'm out on site four days out of the week uh, working with the volunteers and our subcontractors who donate their time and uh, then I spend one day in the office with Nate and uh, work on stuff in the office like quotes and bids. Well today we're just kind of going over the plans looking to see if, if they will fit what we need for square footage, uh, windows and, and just the process of that. What's exciting about this build for us is this is potentially a huge cost savings using earth to build homes and potentially a time saver in, in terms of using drones to, to build the walls as well. And this lot is a lot that we've developed for affordable housing and um, I would say we are just trying to figure out what to build the foundation out of um, given that there's so much slope here um, and just figuring out sun and walls and trusses and all that. Yeah, we're really excited about the construction opportunity that we have here to um, make affordable housing more accessible. Um, and personally too, I'm excited about the sustainability aspect of it um, and the longevity and durability aspect. Um, so we came out here today to see if this site uh, would work and I think we're all in agreement that it will. And we're excited to get started and start construction and iron out the rest of the details. Survey as well. Just so everybody understands. Actually, if we can get our hands on that, yeah, be... I can send it to you. It's awesome. They got these lots divided. That's how Habitat. Oh. Ah. So there's under Probably. the new UDOs, the uh, the square footage for the lot um, is you can split more than you used to be able to. Great. This the sidewalk has to be cement, but then we can do gravel after that. It looks exactly like what they did over there. Well, you know the cool thing is, is Indiana has a a, a new hemp cooperative. So there's actually farmers that have gotten together and created their own organizational structure that they run democratically amongst themselves. And if you can support something like that, you should support something like that. Um, and yeah, they've got all this otherwise waste material. We could be putting that to use. So we're looking at hemp shiv and hemp fiber. I'll open this bag up and it comes in a variety of lengths, easy to cut. And again, it's just take that waste material, using it again, that's a no brainer. It's standard cob is three materials, but if you can get any one of those materials to do double duty, do. And so some of our organic material that is otherwise knitting the structure together into that monolithic wall, you could potentially use them to add some insular value as well. And, and some acoustical value as well too. So yeah, we're, we're experimenting widely as you can see. We're experimenting widely with a variety of mixes, which is otherwise a standard, you know, centuries old mix. Aggregate, clay, and binder. Um, but we can get clever with how we do that. Join us next week for a video testing out their drone and the AI system, training it some new things.